In the last video, we saw that the diradicaloid nature of the carbonyl in pi star state commonly leads to either a diradical with two radical centers inside the same molecule or a radical pair with two radicals generated still in close contact, for example, inside a solvent cage with the possibility of diffusing away from one another. In this video, we're going to kind of close the loop to get back to closed shell species through secondary thermal processes. So we've actually left the excited state potential energy surface, and we're going to start with a diradical structure and talk about the fates of that diradical that are possible after it's generated in a photochemical process, like we saw in the last video. So, for example, one reaction that generates a, a diradical, a 1,4 diradical, is this gamma hydrogen abstraction, where a hydrogen at the gamma position with respect to a carbonyl group is abstracted upon photoexcitation of the carbonyl. This leads to a 1,4 diradical structure. We're familiar with this structure from, for instance, additions to alkenes that we saw in the last video. But here it's generated a slightly different way. Even so, an understanding of this biradical intermediate is going to give us good insight into how it can behave. And actually, some of this can extend to radical pairs as well, as they have some of these processes available as well. And so I wanted to talk briefly about the structure of the diradical and some interesting differences in the singlet and triplet diradicals. So this is actually a calculation result that I ran on the triplet diradical associated with this structure right here. And I looked at the two orbitals corresponding to the SOMOs. I looked at the shapes of the SOMOs. And in the triplet diradical, we see a very clear separation of the electrons. In fact, they can't overlap, right? That would violate the Pauli exclusion principle. So they are completely on the two, on the, the one atom and the four atom with absolutely no possibility of any sort of Zwitter ionic character, right? With both electrons living on one atom and none on the other. Triplet diradicals are pure diradicals. But if you look at the singlet, something interesting happens. You see that the SOMOs have some bleed over, we might say, where there's some electron density on both atoms for both supposedly unpaired electrons, indicating that there is some probability that in fact the electrons will be paired. That at any given moment in time, we've got some Zwitter ionic character in this structure. So the singlet diradical Zwitter ion distinction is a little bit artificial and we can expect and we should expect somewhat unpredictable either diradical reactivity or Zwitter ion reactivity depending on the situation, the solvent, the temperature, so on and so forth. The reaction conditions are going to have a profound effect on the outcomes of reactions from these singlet either diradical or Zwitter ion or some mixture of the two, some quantum mechanical mixture of the two reactions involving these species. What we can say in general, though, is constraining ourselves now to biradical or diradical structures, there are three things that can happen to a biradical. Radical-radical coupling, fragmentation or elimination, as we've called it previously, or addition processes. And addition includes kind of implicitly here atom abstraction, since addition to a sigma bond, for example, this going backwards to reform the starting material is akin to the addition of this radical center to the OH sigma bond. That's a kind of addition. It's addition to a sigma bond that cleaves the sigma bond, and so an atom is transferred, but we can almost think of it in the spirit of an addition process. Of course, if we were talking about a pi bond, the sigma bond would remain intact, and so then it would be a bona fide addition process. But you get what I'm saying. We're going to kind of lump atom abstractions in with addition processes. But really, I want to focus on radical-radical coupling and fragmentation possibilities uh, here. So one thing that can happen is the two radical centers can simply couple. Particularly if they have opposite spins, that radical-radical coupling is just going to lead to the formation of a new sigma bond, and this can happen very rapidly when slash if spin allowed, and if the conformational dynamics make sense, right? If the radical centers are actually close in space. For radical pairs, this is very, very common, particularly singlet radical pairs undergo this radical coupling process very rapidly to form a brand new sigma bond. And this can sometimes be desirable and, and sometimes not. For instance, if we're interested in a homolysis of a bond, radical-radical coupling is sometimes undesirable. The other thing that can happen is fragmentation. And this is kind of an elimination process 
driven by the formation of two new pi bonds. And so the electron flow is gonna sort of be reminiscent of a beta elimination type of process where two new alkenes are forming. And so in this case, this would lead to an enol as sort of the left half and an alkene, in fact, ethylene as the right half. And what's really happened here is homolytic cleavage of the two three bond leading to two new alkenes on either side, two new pi bonds, I should say, on either side. In thinking about addition and atom abstraction processes, we can think about things like the radical centers picking up hydrogen atoms from solvent, for example. So, for example, we could end up with an alcohol structure where we have picked up a hydrogen from solvent or from some hydrogen donor in the system and the other radical electron has done the same. This is relatively uncommon for biradicals because we'd need to pick up two hydrogens, but we can at least think about it as a possibility, atom abstraction by one of the radical centers or both. And this is very common from radical pairs. So say for example, a photochemical, say sigma bond cleavage generated a radical pair. If these are able to separate, say R is able to find itself surrounded by solvent, far from X dot, right, R and X have escaped the solvent cage, then R can pick up a hydrogen from solvent to form RH. And this is an atom abstraction process that's a very common secondary fate of a radical generated in a photochemical process. Quite often you'll just see sort of magical mysterious hydrogens appear where it's implied that those hydrogens came from abstraction from solvent molecules via the generation of a radical. So in closing, I'll just say you'll want to be on the lookout for these three different types of processes from biradical or radical pair intermediates. And particularly for diradical or biradicals, the first two are very important. Radical-radical coupling and fragmentation. And these do depend on spin state. Radical coupling can only take place if the electrons have anti-parallel spins. And in fact, the same is true of fragmentation. The electrons must have opposite spins, anti-parallel spins, in order for this fragmentation to produce two singlet molecules. One thing we often run into is that triplet biradicals have much longer lifetimes than the corresponding singlets. And this allows for things like rotation around bonds, conformational equilibration, and things that are going to profoundly change the product distribution relative to singlet reactivity, the reactivity of the singlet biradicals.